This was about a, a tantalizing paper from uh, Wooters and Asher Perez that had showed that if you have three imperfectly distinguishable polarization states of a photon, for example, vertical and 120 degrees and 240 degrees, like we call it the Mercedes-Benz states, uh, that in principle you can only distinguish two reliably, the perpendicular states, but if you have three that are 120 degree angles, they're not perfectly distinguishable. You're given two copies of this, and what Paris and Wooters uh, investigated was how much better could you distinguish them by a complicated measurement than uh, you could by a simple measurement. They found that you could distinguish them better by a joint measurement, by having them both in the same lab, than by doing separate measurements, even if you were allowed to talk and back and forth and do very gentle measurements. I measure a little bit about this and I tell the result to the other person and then they measure the other one and then they talk back and forth for 20 iterations. It still isn't as good as having them both in the same place. And we were trying to figure out what is it that they, what is it that they don't have that they need that would enable them to do as well if they were in separate locations than if they were in the same location. And finally we figured out it was they needed some entanglement. So in other words, it, and it was pointed out even in the original uh, Paris Wooders paper that, uh, that this effect was a dual to the uh, phenomenon of entanglement. That is, in entanglement, two particles that are prepared in the same place behave in a strange way when you measure them separately. And here are two particles that are prepared separately and yet you can find out more of them by measuring them together than by measuring them separately. So that, that, that duality was pointed out in the original paper by Paris and Wooters, but it was a paper that, it was a very uh, stimulating paper, but it didn't solve the problem. It said, we don't understand why this is the case. So then we realized that by sharing entanglement between the two observers and by permitting them to communicate, you could simulate being in the same place. And uh, we, of course, started sending emails to Asher Paris in, 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 in Israel. The rest of us were all exchanging emails right after this talk because it was a stimulating conversation. And Paris was saying, well, it's as if, as if one of the parties has some long-handled measuring tools that he can measure it even though it's not in the same place. And finally, we realized what, what it was doing, what was happening is that by by doing a joint measurement on one particle and one half of an entangled pair, you were, you were recreating the state of, the, of that particle in the other lab. And I suggested the name teleportation for it. And Asher Paris said, oh, that's a, that is a barbarism. It's mixing Greek and Latin roots. You should stick with the Greek root and call it telephoresis. But the other people all like teleportation better, so we stuck with that. One of our colleagues who was who was talking to us much of the time but wasn't actually working on this one, said, uh, it was Ben Schumacher, and he said, oh, I'm glad I'm not part of this because you've given it a name that will produce all kinds of uh, misunderstanding. <laughs>